I wish I could go back and pick up a Fujifilm camera for the first time. If I could, this video is the advice I would tell myself. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Today we're talking about switching to Fujifilm. Tips you should know, and some advice to get you headed off in the right direction. For this video, I'll be discussing the X-T series line of Fuji cameras, but much of what I'm saying can apply to any Fujifilm camera. First up is that with Fujifilm, you are gonna wanna rethink your relationship to shooting and using JPEGs. What'll happen is you're gonna find yourself wanting to shoot with JPEG more often. Now, first off, on Fujifilm system, you won't find any of those boring standard or portrait profiles like you would say in Canon. Instead, you will be using what are called film simulations with cool names like Provia, Classic Chrome, Acros, and so forth. These are all designed to match Fuji's line of film stock profiles. And the colors, contrast, and overall skin tones with these film sims are just beautiful. Fujifilm does not use a PASM dial on their X XT series of cameras. Instead, they use independent dials for aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. This definitely confuses new users who often don't understand how to put the camera into automatic mode or how to put the camera into, say, shutter priority and so forth. So one of the keys to your success in using Fujifilm is understanding how these three dials all work together. So to put the camera into automatic mode, you need to make sure that each dial, the aperture on the lens, the ISO dial and the shutter speed dial are all set to A for automatic. Once you do that, the camera will be in all automatic mode and it will function exactly like, say, a Canon that has the PASM dial in A. Once you're in all automatic mode, you can further refine your exposure by then using the exposure compensation dial. Okay, so now to put it in, say, shutter priority mode, simply keep all the other dials in A and just rotate the shutter shutter dial until you select the setting that you want. You could do the same thing with aperture or ISO as well. And lastly, to put the camera in all manual mode, simply set fixed values for all three dials, just anything but automatic. Keep in mind that when you do this, the camera will be in full automatic mode, you will have full control over the camera, and because of that, your exposure compensation dial will no longer work. Fujifilm's ISO handling is Excellent. Don't be afraid to go a bit higher on your ISO, especially if you're shooting raw and you planned on editing later. You can selectively bring back shadows and highlights with a lot of latitude in the Fujifilm system. Frankly, I think you can shoot up to ISO 3200 at least in many cases and not worry about it. A tip I have for you is to set your camera's auto ISO limit range from 160 to 3200 and then set the camera on auto ISO. This is good especially for new users to sort of help them get up to speed on the rest of the settings without worrying about ISO so much. To do that, go into your settings, into your camera icon to ISO auto setting, you see that? And go ahead and select auto one, default sensitivity to 160, max sensitivity to 3200, minimum shutter speed to auto. Be careful with minimum shutter speed, however, because the camera will drop the shutter speed to the point to make sure that you have enough light if it's unable to do so with these other settings. Just to be safe, you might wanna set your minimum shutter speed to be at least one 1 125th of a second or even one 1 250th of a second, especially if you're shooting people. If you find that that does not give you the proper exposure and not enough light in the shooting situation that you're in, go ahead and raise the max sensitivity to 6400. Even at 6400, you can get some great shots with the Fujifilm camera system. Fujifilm focus modes are one of the most important parts of the camera to master. I have an entire video on this subject, which you can check out, and I will have links to those videos in the description below. Now, while Fujifilm offers great autofocus, using 100% manual focus is something that I want to, please forgive me, focus a bit more on in the next couple of minutes. So when the camera is in full manual focus mode and you are manually turning the focus ring on the lens, you're actually sending an electronic signal from the lens 
to the camera, telling the camera where you want to focus, then the camera is then relaying that information back to the lens. And as such, it's not really truly manually focusing. Now, this behavior works the same way with all Fujinon and Fujifilm lenses and electronically adapted third-party lenses, such as this Viltrox. You see the contact points right there? So yes, you're manually focusing, but you're not manually turning the lens with your hands. Does that make sense? However, on a non-electronically connected, completely manual lens, such as this Seven Artisans 35mm f0.95, and you'll notice there's no contact points at all. You see that? It is nothing but metal touching metal okay that's it now when you manually focus watch this dink dink it stops you see that there is no electronic signal that passes from the lens to the camera it does not pass go it does not collect two hundred dollars now if you're just starting out with Fujifilm there are two main tools you're gonna want to use to help you with manual focus they're called manual focus assist and manual focus zoom check the first one manual focus assist is located in AFMF setting of the camera right here and you can choose some options. But go ahead and use Focus Peak Highlight. I think you're gonna like that one the best. You can also quickly switch manual focus tools by pressing down and holding the rear command dial. You can only do this when the camera is in M for manual focus mode. So once you have it in M, then if you press and hold down on the back rear command dial, pressing and holding, pressing it, there it is, you see that? I'm gonna press and hold it again. Look at that, press and hold it again. Look at that, see, until I get to the one that I wanna use. In this case, red focus peak highlight. So it's very simple. Point your camera at your subject, start to manually focus using the focus ring, and whatever you see in red, that's the area that will be in focus. I have a very shallow depth of field here. Have a look at this. Right now, pretty much the zero and the P key are in focus, but now I'm gonna rotate the ring. Look at that, I'm rotating it. Now the N key is in focus, but the back keys are not. And it's just a bit easier to see it when you have this tool enabled. And here's a secret. Once you press it in and you've zoomed in a little bit, rotate the command dial just a little and you'll zoom in even more. Check this out. First, I aim and I focus. Then I press once the rear command dial. Boom. Okay, now I've zoomed in. You see that? But now I'm going to turn the dial. Okay, watch this. Boom. It gave me that little bit of extra zoom in. And of course I can get out of this by pressing in on the rear command dial, boom, and back. And that's a great combination to use those two tools. The first being manual focus assist, setting your camera up so that you have red peak highlight, say, and then using the rear command dial to zoom in using manual focus zoom check. Speaking of the rear command dial and the buttons on the camera, my next piece of advice is to make sure that you focus on customizing two main areas of the camera, the buttons on the back and creating a My Menu. Customizing the buttons on the back is the easiest thing in the world. All you need to do is press and hold DISP back for a few seconds and you'll see this menu appear. Then you can simply pick the button you wanna change, go into the menu and assign it a new function. Now, the reason this is so important is that there are certain camera features that you can only access if you assign them to a custom button. So for example, I could assign my top D-pad button, which is currently AF mode, to the histogram. See that right there? Now, whenever I press the top D-pad button, have a look at that. The histogram appears. Now, setting up my menu is also a great way to have easy access to those camera features that you use all the time. So anytime you press menu OK, it will jump, you see that, into my menu, and right there. These are the settings I happen to have for my menu. Setting up my menu is very easy. Go into the wrench, into user setting, my menu setting. If you have an X-T4, you might see different my menu settings, one for stills, one for video. And in there, you can add them, you can reorder them, and you can remove them. And once they're in my menu, the minute you hit menu OK, it will jump to my menu first and you can quickly access them from there. Now, while Fuji does offer what's called a Q menu, I don't think it's that useful for raw shooters. Many of the camera's raw settings cannot be customized with this menu. The Q mode is more or less a place to dial in your custom JPEG recipes for your shots. Settings such as white balance, 
balance, clarity, highlights, shadows, and so forth. I find that using my menu is much more handy than using the Q menu if mostly what you're shooting are RAW files. But try it out and see what works the best for you. Now the Fujifilm X-T series cameras, up until the X-T3 used this type of battery right here. The Fujifilm NP-W126S lithium ion battery. This battery is not very good. It has about a spit of power in it and it doesn't last very long. Now when Fuji switched to the NP W235 battery, this battery does have a much more reasonable amount of battery life. Because of these smaller, you know, spit of power, barely any power batteries, Fujifilm ended up giving camera owners the option of using kind of a dumbed down mode called either normal or economy mode. You'll find these modes in the power management section of your camera. Now using normal or economy, you will get more battery life. However, you will not get the full performance of the camera. Most noticeably, the camera's autofocus system will not be as good. You have an awesome photography machine. Don't cripple it. Therefore, I recommend that you always keep the camera in boost mode. And yeah, you're gonna use up these batteries a bit faster, but I don't know, just carry an extra battery or two if possible. It is a small price to pay to have all of the features on this camera performing at their very best. The whole idea behind Fuji film cameras was to reduce the size, give you great ergonomics, and provide you with a high quality mirrorless camera. However, hands come in all shapes and sizes, and for some, gripping the smallish hand grip for long periods of time can kind of turn into an ergonomic problem. This can be even more problematic when you have a larger lens attached, like for example the 50 to 140, right? And you're holding the camera like this all day long, what happens happens is because the grip is kind of smaller, you feel this area of the camera digging into your palms more. It's not as comfortable. So there are three main fixes for this a battery grip, a thumb extender, and a metal grip extender. First, the battery grip. Fuji does sell one of these, and it's pretty good. However, it's expensive and it does make the camera a bit larger. It is great though for those vertical shots. So for more budget friendly options, I would recommend instead of investing in the battery grip right now, if budget is a concern, check out this thumb rest right here. Simply slide it into the hot shoe mount just like this, and now you have a place to rest your thumb. You see that? It does make it a bit easier. Although I must tell you that over time, putting this kind of pressure on this area of the hot shoe mount could cause it to loosen up. It hasn't happened to me yet, but I have heard from other people where that has happened, just as an FYI. I think actually the best compromise you can get for ergonomics on the Fujifilm camera would be to use one of these JJC HG line of metal grip extenders. These are about $35 and they screw right onto the back of the camera. What's nice is you do not even need to have a screwdriver. It has a screw mechanism just like this. What's great is it makes the camera feel really good in your hand and it doesn't put any stress on the hot shoe mount. But for me, what sealed the deal with this thing is how easy it is to attach to a tripod. It has mounting indentations right in it. You see that right there? So without doing anything else or needing any kind of adapter, boom, you just put the camera on just like that tighten and you are good to go. Oh, and lastly, if you're new to Fujifilm, you might wanna pick up one of these shutter release buttons right here. These are about $8 and they come in different colors and they are so much better than using the regular Fujifilm uncovered shutter release button. I think it's actually the best value accessory you can get for the money for the Fujifilm camera system. And of course, I will leave affiliate links to all this stuff down below because I wanna make as much money as possible here. For those of you who are just starting out with Fujifilm, welcome. This is a wonderful camera system that's going to provide you with years of great equipment, outstanding lenses, and a lot of fun shooting. Well, that wraps it up for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see you again in another video very soon. Take care.